Good morning, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity to present my work at this summer school. So, um, I will indeed speak about uh, gerokinetic flows of Poissonic questions and um, uh, exit conservation law, which correspond to this system. I will start with a short introduction. If it wouldn't be, it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, so I will start with short introduction. I will introduce first of all the gerokinetic class of Poisson questions, why they are important in magnetized plasma physics theory, and um, uh, why it is important to uh, introduce a variational formulation for uh, such a theory. What is the general concept of variational formulation of the gerokinetic theory? Um, I will pay my attention in my talk uh, most of the time on momentum conservation law derivation via Noether method and how it can be interpreted physically uh, and how we can obtain from this uh, very abstract um, derivation uh, transport the question for momentum, which was in the scope of the interest of plasma physics community during last uh, several decades. So, in particular, I would like to emphasize the role of the radial polarization, which is one of the important uh, concepts of this uh, derivation. So, um, so, first of all, what is the gerokinetic class of Poisson system? Uh, we have heard here on a summer school many times about uh, gerokinetics. Um, and why it was introduced, this concept was introduced, because magnetized plasma uh, represent a multi-scale system. So we have motion and a multiple uh, scales. We also know that turbulence uh, governs um, energy, and transport, uh, energy and momentum transport in plasma, as well as growth of instabilities. Um, and what we need to derive is a consistent description of low frequency electrostatic or electromagnetic, if we talk about flux of uh, Maxwell system, uh, microturbulence. So, um, because in a plasma we have very fast scales of motion, like gyr motion, which are not very relevant for uh, long, time long time processes, uh, the idea is to remove this fast scale motion from the dynamical description and um, one of the most, um, how to say, most, one of the most um, adapted processes, one of the most systematic uh, procedures is the Lee transform procedure. It has been introduced uh, in uh, early 80s, and um, since this time, uh, the Lee transform method for plasma physics uh, have got uh, developed very, very much. So. Uh, what about conservation laws for gerokinetic class of Poisson system? Of course, if we have um, variational formulation for, for the system, uh, we can derive uh, energy conservation and momentum conservation. The energy conservation was in the scope of the interest uh, of plasma physics community since early 80s when people start to uh, proceed with uh, writing a numerical simulation for simulating plasma. Is they would like, of course, to have some uh, criteria to verify if their simulations are right or not, if they conserve energy or not. Um, what about momentum conservation? Momentum conservation was on the scope of the interest during last decades because it gives the possibility to explain momentum transport in plasma and um, a momentum transport is supposed to be one of the reasons for intrinsic rotation and plasma stabilization. So how to get uh, conservation laws systematically and consistently uh, with a dynamical reduction? So this can be done um, if we write gerokinetic theory as a field theory. So um, if we have a formulation with the Lagrangian or field theory formulation, then we can say that our physical theory is well posed. And there were two different ways to uh, proceed with gerokinetic formulation as a field theory, uh, one by Brizard with Eulerian formulation and one by Sugama with Lagrangian formulation. I will talk about this later. It has been done not so long time ago in 2000 comparing to gerokinetic theory which has been started in 70s. So um, 
what we have uh, from this uh, gerokinetic formulation as a field theory. We have a common framework for coupling reduced particle dynamics together with field dynamics, because the dynamical reduction in gerokinetic theory is done for particles, and then this reduced particle dynamics is coupled back with the fields. So, um, uh, the most important feature of uh, formulation as a field theory that we have a guarantee of energetic consistency. So the idea here is to say that all the approximations and all the dynamical reduction are done into the Lagrangian and then once it has been done into the Lagrangian we derive equations of motion and conservation law without any further approximation and this is a very important point. So, um, as I have said, there is two possible formulation for uh, variational uh, principle for gyrokinetic theory. First of all, uh, Lagrangian variational principle, uh, which has been considered for momentum transport uh, design by Scott and Smirnov in 2010. So here, what it means, Lagrangian variational principle, it's like in uh, fluid dynamics when we say that we consider particles uh, from a Lagrangian point of view, like we follow the markers rather than we have a flow and we consider um, fluid as a, as a flow, as a Eulerian distribution function. So here um, particles are considered as a Lagrangian dynamics as markers. So we have a determination of concert quantity via Noether method at the particles levels and then we are using uh, calculation of gyrokinetic loss of momentum um, in order to write momentum density conservation law. So the point here is that um, we don't have a dynamical variable which describes uh, our particle dynamics. What happens in the Eulerian variational principle that I will present in this week is that we will treat particles via loss of distribution function from the beginning uh, as one of the dynamical fields. So it means that um, this method more is more appropriated, for example, for development of such a concept as delta F method. Um, so we truncate initial distribution function in a background distribution and a fluctuation. And for example, such, a, such an approach is very popular for writing peak simulations. And as Ericsson and Ricard uh, presented first week of this school, peak simulations are very popular for modelization of um, plasma dynamics. So, of course, in this framework of Eulerian variational principle, we can also derive consistently corresponding conservation laws. Without taking any loss of gyrokinetic reduced moments, it will just follow from our derivation. So, here I would like to just introduce very briefly the main concept of the modern gyrokinetic theory. And here I would like to start with a particle redu reduction. So, um, I will present some pedagogical slide to remind you what is the non-canonical Hamiltonian formulation of dynamics, because it is what is used for writing reduced dynamics on a particle level. So here we have uh, this small picture. What we have is a um, um, particle gyrating around the magnetic field line. So we have a curved magnetic field line with LB as the length of the curvature of magnetic field line. And here X is instantaneous center of particle rotation. So as we can see between this instantaneous center of particle rotation and particle itself, we have rho. Rho is a kind of displacement. So what is this instantaneous center of particle rotation? We name it guiding center or gyro center. Uh, accordingly to the um, step of the dynamical reduction. So most of the time we say that big X is a gyro center and as a place to look at the particle dynamics as a something gyrating very fast in our magnetic field line, we will say that now we just following, following the guiding center which has slow drift um, along magnetic field lines. So the main idea of the particle dynamical reduction is to systematically uncouple this fast scale of motion from the slow scale of motion. And here we are working on a guiding center phase space coordinate. So we have guiding center, P parallel, kinetic parallel momentum, zero momentum, which is an adiabatic invariant for our system. And uh, uh, we have here zeta, which is the fast variable, variable of duration. So the presence of uh, adiabatic invariant in our system allows us 
to construct new set of variables such that at each step of the dynamical reduction, mu dot or g dot, here just multiplied by b divided by uh, omega Lorman frequency, will be consistent, will be conserved exactly. And then zeta will be represented represents ignorable fast variable. So this is the idea of the dynamical reduction. So how we realize it? We will, uh, we will proceed with introducing a set of near identity phase space transformation. So here, why it's near identity? Because we have epsilon small parameter, and this small parameter I will discuss this later. It has different meaning accordingly uh, uh, to the step of the dynamical reduction. So it can be related to curvature of magnetic field uh, or it can be related to fluctuation of electromagnetic field in our system. So the idea here is to identify a uh, new set of variables such that g dot is equal to zero and so at each step of our dynamical reduction we will, be, we will need to identify this generating phase space vector field for each variable, for a guiding center, for parallel kinetic momentum, for zero momentum, and for the uh, zeta zero phases. So uh, before I go later, uh, go further, I would like just to remind for people who are probably not familiar with Hamiltonian and Lagrangian formulation of dynamics, what is that? So I don't know if it's cut it here, unfortunately, so it's L, curl L, so it's a Lagrangian. Imagine we have a, a very like high school problem or first year problem. We have a particle, free particle in a magnetic field. So what we have as a Lagrangian for this particle, we have uh, here a canonical momentum d multiplied by velocity of the particle minus its Hamiltonian. So here we have definition of the canonical momentum and Hamiltonian of the free particle is just a modulus of its uh, kinetic momentum, p squared. So what we do here, we just write uh, the equations of motion, Euler Lagrange equations of motion, so d over dt of dl over dx dot is dl over dx, and then we will uh, define here the Lorentz force, and if we derive uh, the same thing with respect to kinetic momentum, then we will just define here that the velocity of the particle is the kinetic momentum divided by mass of the particle. Capital A is the, sorry, of course, uh, capital A is the magnetic um, potential of a particle. So curl of A is the magnetic field. Okay, so now uh, what uses gyrokinetic theory? Gyrokinetic theory transforms this uh, object, which is just a functional function, to the one form. So we will be dealing with phase space Lagrangian, which is one form LDT. Here we will have part, which is the symplectic part, and we will have Hamiltonian part. What is the symplectic part? Uh, symplectic part, gamma here, so gamma is this thing, so it's kinetic, it's a magnetic uh, potential plus uh, kinetic uh, part of the uh, momentum. And uh, symplectic form is d gamma, d gamma so it's, uh, it's a little bit two form. Um, and here we will have um, appearing coupling uh, between uh, motion of the particle and a field, it's like magnetic field, which is curl of A, into the symplectic form. So if we look at this symplectic form, it's not a canonical symplectic form because we have here dxy, dxj. Canonical symplectic form would have only things like that, dpy, dpj, dxj. And uh, if now we just make transformation, we just inverse symplectic matrix and we write the non-canonical Poisson bracket, we will see that here we have uh, this coupling term appearing. So uh, what I would like to say is that in a normal case, when we speak about Hamiltonian dynamics, probably at the first year of the university, all the, uh, all the brackets is just dx uh, dp minus dp dx. And this is something extra um, which appears. But the most important thing for Hamiltonian bracket, or for canonical, for, for Poisson bracket, sorry, is to be anti-symmetric, to uh, satisfy Leibniz, and to satisfy Jacobi identity. And this object perfectly satisfies all these uh, three requirements. So um, what I would like to say here is just that nothing is too too scary and too complicated when we speak about non-canonical Hamiltonian formulation of dynamics. It means just that we redistribute a uh, coupling between uh, field and particle, which is represented by this uh, uh, 
magnetic potential. So as a place to put it into the Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian here is a Hamiltonian of the free particle with only kinetic momentum here, we introduce this coupling with the field into the uh, bracket. And then we derive equations of motion and they are perfectly the same as the early, earlier Lagra Lagrange equations which follows from standard Lagrangian framework. So what I would like to highlight here is just that uh, sometimes when we are working with physical reduction of dynamics, it's more convenient to work with non-canonical coordinates because they have more physical meaning than canonical coordinates. And this is what happens in a gyrokinetic dynamical reduction. So here is the main concept of the uh, gyrokinetic dynamical reduction in a particle phase space. There is a little bit of history. So what's going on? Uh, in general, we can do um, this gyrokinetic reduction uh, for particles in two steps or in one step. So um, historically, first of all, by Little John and his paper of 79, he passed from particle dynamics towards the guiding center dynamics. So what it means that he considered the particle moving into the non-uniform magnetic field without any fluctuations of electromagnetic field. And he said that here is a small parameter related to um, non-uniformity of this field. Rho L here is the Larmor radius of the particle, and this is just perpendicular length of the perpendicular gradient of magnetic field. So um, then uh, later, in the wake of Chromos and Hamm and Brizard, they reintroduce into the system the electromagnetic fluctuations, and then they proceed with the second step of dynamical reduction uh, with this uh, small parameter, which is now related to electromagnetic field fluctuations. I would like to, I don't know if you remember, first week there were, was a talk of Xavier Garbet, and he said that there is difficulties between, uh, about, the, about the coupling, uh, for example, MHD equations with gyrokinetic equations. And the problem was because of uh, uh, definition of this small parameter. So if, we remember, if you remember the MHD equations, of course, they describe dynamics on a large scales. And um, for this case, uh, this should be, um, should be uh, small. And um, for gyrokinetic case, sometimes people just forgot to put this parameter here, and they said that uh, the small parameter related to gyrokinetics is just E delta phi. Delta phi is the fluctuation of electrostatic potential divided by, uh, t uh, by temperature of the, of the plasma. Uh, and then they see that there is incompa incompatibility because MHD is uh, something describing system on a large scale, scales and, and gyrokinetics something that describes system on a small scales. But in fact, um, if we consider the small parameter together, we will see that this term is order of, of one for gyrokinetic. Uh, this factor is order of one for gyrokinetic and this is small, but we can also say that gyrokinetic uh, ordering is fine when this is small and this is large. Because, uh, as this, sorry, this is small and this is order of one. And this is what happens when we want to couple uh, MHD with uh, gyrokinetics. And when we want to go towards um, like strong flows in our system and hybrid models. So um, I think that uh, there is a lack of information about uh, gyrokinetic ordering in general, and this should be clarified. Or whatever. So um, there is another there is another um, possibility to proceed with dynamical reduction when we say that we have only one small parameter in our system and we go from particle dynamics to gyrocenter dynamics in one step. So we have in the same time uh, non-uniformity of magnetic field in our system and we have electromagnetic field fluctuation at the same time. So it's like double difficulty. And uh, my personal opinion is that I don't really like this approach because. Uh, I will show you how we can easily make mistakes by calculating what we name gyrokinetic polarization. So um, here I would like to, before I proceed, I would like to show you the um, commut commutativity diagram. So as I said, the dynamical reduction for gyrokinetics is done in general on particle phase space. And then uh, if you want to proceed with the Lurian formulation in one Lagrangian, then of course we have to show how this uh, dynamical reduction uh, transfers to the distribution function. So here I pass from particle phase space with near identity phase space transformation to guiding center phase space. And then what I will see is that this transformation will induce a push forward and pull back uh, transformations on the distribution function. 
And uh, uh, this push forward and pull back transformations, of course, they contain uh, the information about uh, the generating fields, which generates our change of variables. So uh, here, what is used in general is a scalar invariance of the distribution function. It means that if we use original distribution function from particle phase space towards scalars, or we do this, this path and this path, so it means that we reduce our, our particle phase space and then we take a uh, distribution function on the reduced phase space. It means that at the place of working on six dimensional phase space, we will be working and four plus one phase space. So it means that here mu is the constant of motion and zeta is uncoupled. Um, it will be the same scalar. So this is what is generally uh, in a basis of the concept of all the gyrokinetics codes, because we can resolve uh, reduced characteristics and reduced phase space, 4 plus 1, at the place of six-dimensional phase space, and then reconstruct the distribution function on this reduced phase space, and doesn't lose any information about that. And of course, it makes our sense in the in a, uh, reduction of time of the calculation. So. Um, here is something that I would like to tell you next, is of course the consequences about uh, this um, about this dynamical reduction. So um, nothing is free when we uh, pass from six dimensional phase space to four plus one dimensional phase space. Uh, we reduced dynamical uh, part of uh, particles. What about fields now? Uh, fields now knows nothing about this dynamical reduction, of course. And um, uh, now we have to work with such an obje object like a gyrokinetic delta function, which brings particle and fields at the same position. So why it happens? So as I told you that as a place of looking at the particle, uh, full particle dynamics, which is duration around magnetic field lines, I'm now looking at the uh, position of the guiding center, big X red here. And uh, what concerns my field, which is cal calculated in the position R, it knows nothing about this dynamical reduction. So what will happen when I will bring a reduced particle dynamics and field dynamics together, I have to take contribution of uh, radius rho epsilon around this position of the field from every, uh, every circle, every guiding center, which uh, can be on this, uh, on this radii here, rho epsilon. So and, uh, in general, what happens that I'm now working with the zero center position or guiding center position, uh, and here I'm using two, uh, two back transformation. So initial position of my particle or the position in which field is really evaluated is now related to this reduced position via these two st sets of transformation. And so uh, if I write, if I exp ex just expand this, uh, uh, operation, what I will see that I have a um, difference between my reduced position and initial position in which field is evaluated. I will have a displacement coming from two steps, from the guiding center step and from the zero center step, and together I will say that it is a zero center displacement. So um, here you see this object, which is gyrokinetic delta function, which will be a very important concept for derivation of equations of motion from the Lagrangian. Um, and so here I will see that I have uh, this big X, like average position of my particle plus rho epsilon, this displacement, minus R, minus R. R is a position in which field is evaluated. And this, this is a source of my polarization, information about polarization, information between, about um, shift between fields and particle, reduced particle dynamics. So um, here is uh, the Eulerian Lagrangian for a gyrokinetic system. So it looks like pretty much as normal physical theory for uh, like uh, if, if everything here was started from fluid dynamics. So when I started to learn about this theory, I started with fluid dynamics. Uh, and then uh, progressively, I started to couple electromagnetic field inside. So this uh, Lagrangian has been proposed by Brizard in 2000. It's a uh, PRL. Um, so we have here a part which is related to reduced, uh, uh, reduced dynamics of the particles, which is uh, represented here in the Eulerian point of view. So we have a distribution function F curl, and we have Hamiltonian here. Why I say that it's curl? Because here I'm working on extended uh, phase space. I have to um, 
put inside the time derivative of the distribution function. This is why now I'm not working on six-dimensional phase space, but I'm working on eight-dimensional phase space. I autonomize my system. I introduce uh, epsilon, which is the energy of the system, which is canonically conjugated to time. So uh, this part of the Lagrangian is defined on eight-dimensional phase space. And here I have a part related to fields. So as I talk about Vlas of Poisson equations, so of course b I don't have here a fluctuation of magnetic field. I have only background magnetic field B0, and E1 here is the fluctuating electrostatic field. So um, as I said, uh, here you, you have something very, very generic, very, very familiar for um, theoret theoretical physics. So um, Lagrangian or action here. Um, so uh, what I would like to say is that uh, we have here a physical constraint that H curls should be equal to zero. Um, and then we have that uh, Hamiltonian represents the energy of our system. So this is a physical constraint. It also appears very often in um, uh, particle physics uh, as a constraint of ma mass, couche uh, de mass. I don't know how to say it in English. So it's, it's very similar to um, particle physics. OK, so um, here I remind you one more time that uh, my gyrocenter Hamiltonian is um, Hamiltonian minus uh, this it's an autonomized Hamiltonian and zero center it means that it contains information about reduced dynamics of the particles and here I have a loss of distribution function which is also multiplied by delta function here in order to go to a dimensional phase space and this f straight is a distribution function on my reduced phase space so as I told you this is an advantage for computational physics because this distribution function is evaluated in 4 plus 1 uh, phase space. So here I just would like to show you very quickly how we derive equations of motions from the first principle of the dynamics. So of course here I say that I have uh, delta A G Y is equal to zero. And then in this case from the Lagrangian density variation I will be able to write um, equations of motion. Um, I would like to pay your attention that in the Eulerian variational principle, we have, however, some uh, specialities in, uh, when we calculate uh, variation of Eulerian uh, fields. So when I uh, calculate variation of electric field, there is nothing surprise. There's just a variation of electrostatic potential if I want. Uh, and um, uh, for extended loss of distribution here, there is something special. Something special, it means that we have constraint variation for this extended loss of distribution function. So extended bracket means that I'm working on a dimensional phase space one more time. And delta S is my generating function, which will uh, not inter intervene into the equations of motion, but will be useful for derivation of Noether method and conservation laws. So um, here, one more time, I remind you that uh, I will have this object appears every time I calculate functional derivative of my um, extended Hamiltonian because of the uh, shift between fields and particles, and because in a Hamiltonian I have coupling between fields and particles. So um, here I would like to say something, something more. So um, I would like to pay your attention that in my, Hamil in my Lagrangian in the beginning, as I told you, I have two types of fields. I have uh, dynamical fields E1 and I have background fields B0, which is not dynamical. Um, so here uh, I have to take it into account when I calculate the variation of, uh, my, of my Lagrangian. So I have to remove from uh, my full variation something that only relates to a presence of non-dynamical fields in order to, to stay dynamical, in fact. So uh, it will be the case when I would like also to separate my uh, distribution function into background distribution and uh, um, some uh, dynamical fluctuation, li like people are doing when they construct peak code. So um, here is <coughs> Lagrangian density variation. So uh, in a different colors, I put here uh, variations which will give me uh, equations of motion. So if I have delta phi y in red here, this is my Poisson equation. Uh, delta S here is my uh, velocity equation on extended phase space, and here I have a neuter density and a neuter flux. So it's some exact derivation which will be useful for me in order to derive my conservation laws. So um, 
here is um, in details just gerokinetic loss of uh, a question. So as I told you, here is the extended uh, bracket. So it means that I put inside the derivative over time of my distribution function, and I have this uh, dynamics as well. So here we have um, characteristics of uh, reduced particle on the phase space. So it's reduced characteristics for the guiding center and reduced characteristics for parallel kinetic momentum. So um, there is a gyrokinetic Poisson question. So, um, and this is uh, in the scope of the interest of community, of course, even right now, because um, the gyrokinetic Poisson question contains um, information about polarization. So we have here a gyrocenter charge, which is just a moment of reduced uh, distribution function. And we have gyrocenter polarization, which contains inside moment with this uh, gyrocenter displacement and higher corrections. And in fact, it's a question of how, how to be consistent. So how to be consistent with dynamical reduction between fields and particles, and how to be consistent with expression of the polarization we take into account. And uh, right now, in, a, in a modern codes, people usually use only uh, linear geocenter polarization, and they have to pay attention to uh, not take too much con corrections into the characteristics into the loss of a question. The characteristics of loss of a question should be consistent with uh, polarization that we put into the um, Poisson equation. So um, here is something very standard for theoretical physics one more time. So there is a Noether method for field theory. So as we know that uh, continuous Lagrangian symmetries are always related with conservation laws. So if I take infinitesimal time uh, displacement in my system, I will derive energy conservation. And if I take infinitesimal space transformation, I will derive momentum conservation. And this is, uh, this is an idea of, uh, of this work, to derive momentum conservation law with using infinitesimal space transformation in my Lagrangian and to see how it, how it works. So uh, I remind you that there is a variation of my Lagrangian density <coughs> when I removed all the equations of motion. So when I removed all the equations of motion from the previous slide here, here, if I just say that this is equal to zero and this is equal to zero, then I will have only a neuter current which, which appears here. And uh, now um, this delta S function will define me which kind of, which group of the transformation I do on my system. So here I will do phase space transformations um, related to, to space. So here I have um, a zero center momentum. And uh <coughs> this is my variation of the of the electrostatic potential, and this is my mixed variation of the Lagrangian, as I told you, because I have a presence of background field sometimes in my system. So I will not do the whole derivation here because I need just blackboard class for that. So what I would like to show you is a very particular case. I will take here the axisymmetric magnetic field, which is written down here in Klebsch coordinates with the Q profile and um, flux uh, coordinates. And um, I will, as we know, in a tokamak, we have um, symmetry of this uh, magnetic field, toroidal symmetry. So I will do infinitesimal rotation around the uh, toroidal axe uh, on, on a, a angle phi. Phi is my toroid toroidal angle. And I will see how my system reacts on this uh, class of the transformation. So uh, here is my uh, generating function. It's one of the most important points in this method to define what is your generating function. And my generating function here is a, a canonical um, toroidal momentum. So to canonical toroidal momentum will contain information about magnetic flux, psi, and it will contain purely kinetic uh, contribution related to parallel kinetic momentum. So um, if I write the conservation law as it is coming from uh, my derivation of Noether method, I will, have, uh, I will have something like that. So my goal now is to use uh, physical uh, elements in order to interpret this abstract equation in a physical way. So I have here density and I have here flux. And um, what I will do next, I will try to separate uh, these purely magnetic con contributions and purely kinetic contributions in order to have a uh, clear separation between polarization effect and kinetic contributions. So here is the final result which we can obtain. So um, 
Here is a transported quantity, and this transported quantity contains two parts. First part is purely kinetic, and the second part is the most interesting part, is related to radial polarization. So it's purely related to effects of the dynamical reduction. And um, here we have part which is a very common one, is a Reynolds stress, and we have some sources. So um, I would like just to make some uh, very quick quick explanation. So here I'm working with magnetic surface averaging. This is something very common in plasma physics when we want to uh, only deal in fact with a radial part of the dynamics. So we uh, here just average over toroidal, uh, over poloidal and toroidal angles and then we can have some simplified expression for divergence for example. And um, in fact, what physicists are interested uh, for is to see how, how uh, what is going on in a radial direction, how momentum is transported in a radial direction from the center of tokamak towards the edge. So uh, I would like to say some words about elimination of this source term. It's, it can be possible when we use uh, this uh, quasi-neutrality condition, so when the uh, reduced um, charge is equal to divergency of uh, the reduced polarization. And also, uh, here I would like just to say that we took into account two uh, physical uh, constraints like charge conservation and a quasi-neutrality condition in order to make appear this, um, this term uh, under the time derivative. So in fact, uh, what we have done, we passed from the very um, very abstract result which comes naturally from the neutral derivation toward um, decomposition in a physical component. So we have kinetic component and we have, um, we have purely, uh, purely flux component or purely um, polarization component. So uh, I would like just um, in a few minutes that probably I have, I would like just to show you uh, what is the meaning of this uh, polarization. What how we can interpret, interpret this polarization. So from the direct derivation, we can just take a moment of the distribution, reduced distribution function with this uh, reduced uh, displacement, which is the difference between um, average position and transformed initial position. So here we will see that uh, our dynamical reduction appears naturally, so all the effects of dynamical reduction are con contributed to this polarization through these generating fields. And so I would like also to remind you that here we have uh, contributions from first step of the dynamical reduction when we consider only non-uniform magnetic field guiding center and then uh, when we introduce fluctuations of the electromagnetic fields. So um, just uh, in the first order, what, is, what it means? In the first order, when we calculate this uh, displacement, so difference between average position and transformed position, we will have uh, two contributions. We will have contributions from uniquely non-uniformity of magnetic field and we will have a standard contribution from the um, fluctuation of the electrostatic potential. So this contribution is very well known. It's in all the, part all the articles since 80s probably. Uh, 88 TS HUM paper which is now implemented in most of the codes. But this part of the displacement has never been written down explicitly. And I will show you why it is important to write it explicitly. But before, I would like to also show you another, um, another possibility to uh, explain what is the polarization, more physical one. It has been introduced uh, by Fierce and Kaufman in 84 and 86. So what is the uh, physical definition of polarization? But first of all, polarization, it's, uh, it's a shift. In fact, we can, we can um, interpret it as a polarization shift. So polarization shift is uh, uh, averaged uh, first or at the first order, for example, we take an average of rho epsilon first order and we'll see that it's just a perpendicular part of the uh, reduced motion here. So if I take my characteristics that I can derive independently uh, by particle dynamical reduction and I just take a cross product, I will obtain exactly the same thing that I showed you in a previous slide. So if I, what I would like to say is if I take uh, just a direct derivation with, uh, with um, calculating my change of variables with these generating fields, or if I, sorry, if I take um, the reduced characteristics 
and I take dynamical definition of the polarization because it's dynamical definition of polarization, I will obtain the same thing. And it means that this term cannot be forgotten. This term related to um, non-uniformity of background magnetic field cannot be forgotten. So what happens very often in a physical, um, in a code and uh, questions that are implemented in a code, that people do have this for characteristic, but they forgot about that for polarization, for uh, quasi-neutrality question or for Poissonic question, as we can say. So here I'll just make a small illustration about what is the, what is the uh, polarization shift. So here we have uh, x, big X, we have um, average position of a particle, and this is uh, big X plus rho epsilon is a uh, um, Initial, pol initial position of a particle. So uh, we have different kind of uh, uh, polarization drift here. So for example, grad B, um, velocity U grad B is uh, this part of the polarization. And uh, so if now I take, uh, I, I, I imagine that my magnetic field is uh, uh, going to uh, an, uh, an, uh, inside, the, inside the blackboard and I have my, uh, velocity which is going, uh, um, yeah, if I have magnetic field going on the inside blackboard and I have gradient of B going uh, upstairs, then I will have the drift motion going in, in this way. So I have uh, U going on this way. And then if I take one more time um, vector product with magnetic field which goes back to the blackboard, then I will see that every time I will have this uh, displacement um, downstairs from this uh, average particle position towards the initial particle position. And I can do the same thing for the Icarus B drift, so we named this part Icarus B drift. So both of this, um, both of this uh, displacement will shift um, the average position towards the initial position. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to show here is that um, now I can write the polarization density from the physical definition with using my uh, reduced characteristics and it will be uh, easier to show you why uh, this part of the uh, polarization density is important for momentum transport for to have a physical interpretation of the quantities that we have transported. So if I write this uh, expression for radial polarization, I will have uh, two parts. I will have a part which is related to, um, um, to polarization, to the shift, and I will have a purely kinetic, um, purely kinetic part. Uh, this is something that uh, is really transported in my system. So it's, uh, and the first order is a toroidal angular momentum. So this is what I have to obtain uh, as the transported quantity physically. And this is what happens when I write my question. So this part is cancelled by this part, purely kinetic part, and what I have here is only part related to um, polarization. So, so it means that it's related only to um, this, um, this part of the polarization. So what I would like to tell you here is I would like to point out your attention that in order to have consistent transported quantity, transported momentum in my system, I have to be really careful. I have to take both contribution from a curvature of magnetic field and my uh, polarization displacement and uh, um, this purely, fluc purely fluctuating part which is related to E cross B drift. So uh, in the most of the time people, physicists try to write this polarization um, radial polarization because they realize that they need it in order to obtain physically m meaningful quantity, but it appears every time ad hoc in ad hoc version. This derivation allows us to have this uh, a radial polarization here uh, very naturally uh, in a consistent way. So uh, in a previous works and uh, probably since 2009, people were looking for um, sources of momentum transfer. So what we can have here under the divergency. So this is a Reynolds tensor, which is a like tensor with um, radial uh, velocity and uh, toroidal velocity, for example. 
and here we have uh, all these corrections, which is related to, for example, um, interaction between particles and fields. And in the physical literature, people, everything which is not a Reynolds tensor, they just say that it's a residual strength tensor, and they try to interpret terms, uh, which they also write most of the time in, time in a doc version, as uh, uh, generators for intrinsic rotation. So um, what we have done in this work and what has been done also in the work of Scott and Smirnov, but they have not uh, considered this part of the displacement. They only worked with this part of displacement because they were in a, a long wavelength limit, that um, it is possible from the derivation of um, by Noether method from Lagrangian formulation of GR kinetic theory to obtain a transport equation for momentum, which will consistently have all these uh, effects of dynamical reduction inside. So this is the main result of uh, of my of my work. So um, as we can in the conclusions, I would like just to say that. Um, it's, it's uh, to have a uh, Lagrangian formulation uh, or field theory formulation for gyrokinetic theory, which co couples uh, reduced particle dynamics with uh, field dynamics, give us the possibility to uh, consistently write uh, conserved quantities for such a system. And if we know exactly what is conserved quantity for that system, we can consistently interpret them as a transport question for th this system and then see naturally how reduced um, particle dynamics interact with field dynamics and what what is going on inside. Um, so this is the main point of uh, va variational formulation for such a theory as a gyrokinetic theory. And in my work, uh, in my near future work, what I'm trying to do is to verify the equations that are um, currently implemented into the uh, code, so we have in Max Planck, we have uh, Eulerian code Gene, and we have peak code Nimorb, and I'm just right, uh, uh, right here to compare my results with people working on another Eulerian semi-Lagrangian called Gisela, to be sure that everyone has consistent equations of motion and that we can um, have uh, the same um, growth rate for, uh, for example, ion temperature gradient and stability when we start with the, initi the same initial conditions, to have cross benchmark between three most important uh, gyrokinetic codes. And so what I can find so far that for electromagnetic case, for example, there is a um, part of the uh, polarization, which is related uh, uniquely to presence of magnetic field, which is actually uh, not implemented into the code. So probably it's something which can can be worked out in a very very near future. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So if I understand correctly, so those uh, uh, equations uh, are not implemented uh, uh, right now in in. Um, what's going on that um, in an electrostatic case everything is fine. So have what I have presented today, lots of Poisson equations um, are okay. So for Gisela, for example, right now there is no problems. But if we're going to um, consider electromagnetic case, full electromagnetic case like of maxwell case, then in this uh, then in this situation we have to add uh, one more term into the quasi neutrality equation. Yeah, it's, it's for sure that it has not been implemented. But this is a case, for example, of uh, electromagnetic peak code like NEMORB, and we in fact don't know very well uh, right now what's going on in the electromagnetic version. An electromagnetic benchmark has not been done so far. It's something that under under constructions right now. But so probably it's a good time to say, uh, hi guys, you have term which is just, you know, missing here, purely, elect purely magnetic term. If you don't take it into account, your characteristics are not consistent with your quasi-neutrality question. Yeah, there is things like that. And can you predict, like, one large-scale uh, feature that would change by adding uh, those missing terms in the 
in an el electromagnetic code. I would like to see it myself as well. I have, to, uh, I have spoken with Eric Sonnendrucker about that, and he said that it would be um, it's some perturbation which is related to delta B perpendicular. So it's a fluctuation of perpendicular fluctuations of magnetic field, or what we say magnetic flutter in, um, in, in a physical language. So um, he said that probably it will be not so easy to see um, right now, like large scale, you know, you have to find, identify a test case in which it will be really uh, important. But first of all, we need to go to the code and change equations and, for example, try uh, ion temperature gradient and see uh, if this instability, is the, the most, you know, basic instability already gives us something new. Like we have changes in growth rate and linear phases or, yeah, I would, I would start with that. I would start with implementing a new term and go to ion temperature gradient and see how it changed the growth rate, yeah. Okay, thank you. Another question, yeah. Um, I would like to know how do you do the benchmark between the different code? You should have a test case to execute and different code and between different set of parameters, extra, extra. It's a, it's a challenging, um, it's a challenging problem uh, because um, every code has its own parameterization, for example. So we have some parameterization which is different from Virginie, for example, in uh, Gisela. So what we're trying to do is to have at least the same profiles like for density and for temperature. So we are looking at the ion temperature gradient one more time. And what we're trying to do is to compare growth rate in linear phases and non-linear phases. And yeah, so this is why I'm here. I, I'm trying to adjust my input file to their input file and to see if everything is... And first, first day when I arrived here, I saw that they have taken different density profiles. So yes. now we have to... But it will be always the case for any different code. So perhaps you can imagine one uh, basic uh, standard input file and uh, each code will derive this input file in their parameters. I mean, there is already, a, this way has already been done in 2000, I think. It was case cyclone, cyclone case. It's a case of, um, you have parameters like what is the uh, small uh, radius of your tokamak, big radius, a magnetic field, etc density profiles. It has been done, um, it has been mo modelized from the shocks of D3D. You know, they, they generate some generic profiles and everything. So everyone can take these profiles. It's not a problem. We have to be just sure that everyone really takes the same profile and not some, some modification. And in my code and need more of the code I'm working, we have different possibilities. So it's, it's just a matter of, you know, understanding and listening to the person in front of you. This is it. <laughs> but it's possible. Thank you. One more question? Anyone? Um, so I, I have a question. Um, can you go back on slide 13? Okay. Uh, that was it. Uh, no, that was the slide where you were talking about the nether yeah. uh, density here and the the nether flux, mm, uh, wasn't it? Not yeah, here. Um, nether density and flux is here. Yes. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. Okay. The lambda and yeah. so how how do you how do you get that from the Lagrangian? Or it's just when you derive your equations of motion, it's a matter to uh, group your terms which are multiplied by delta phi 1 or delta s, and then do some derivations by part in order to have this exact uh, derivative over time and a flux derivative. So it's just a matter of how you play with your terms, and it's just some analytical trick with derivation by parts. This is it. OK, but I, I thought you would get uh, some um, mass equation so you would basically have the d lambda over dt plus the divergence of the mass flux is zero. What do you mean mass flux? Well, 
gamma is a mass, you say gamma is a, ma a density flux. Yeah, so you have here the part which comes from uh, particles with delta S inside, and you have a part which comes with um, delta phi 1 from uh, field parts. Mm -hmm. So what, what's wrong with that? N no, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't mean there is anything wrong. I, I mean, I, I don't really understand it, but it's no. okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry, it's just uh, there is nothing special to do to obtain this equation. It's just you go backwards here for expression of your um, action, and then you just write um, you just write the first variation of your action as as it is, and then you use these rules. In fact, probably this is a trick. You have to use these rules for uh, Eulerian field variations. You have to say that your variation of extended path of distribution function is constrained, and then from this part you will be able to play around with analytical expansion and have some simplifications. So. This form for neuter density and flux are related as well on how you are interpreting your variations in the system, how you define alluring variations in your system. So, because this is probably something not very usual for you, this extended variation for loss of distribution, which is constrained, this is why you look at this and it's not familiar for you under this form. I, yeah, it is not. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, because this is something that um, very often people ask me about why this extended class of distribution should have constrained variation. And I have discussed a lot of time with Brizar, with Alain Brizar, who is my um, non-official PhD advisor, why we should do like that. And the question is because it works. The answer is because it works. Yeah, that's a very good way to do it. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's like physical answer, not really mathematical, but this is how it works. Okay. Okay, let's uh, thank Dr. Tronco again and coffee is waiting for you outside. Thank you.